The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now when Jesus had heard that John the Baptist had been beheaded, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, you, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the gospel of our Lord. This week has been a busy week in the Friedrich household as uh, we get ready to send Sarah back to school. Fun times, fun times. Uh, This past week, we got to take Sarah to new, uh, well, we got to go and she came along, to new parents' orientation. We got to go meet Sarah's uh, four-year-old class teacher. We got to go to the playground and to the shoe store because she keeps growing bigger and bigger and bigger. We got to go to a friend's house for one last summer. Hurrah! And I think Sarah swam about six hours yesterday. Is that right? Yeah, it was a lot. Man, man. What's been on your list? What's been on your list as you get ready for school to start? Is there school classes already started or getting ready to start? Uh, Sports, dance perhaps, band? Have you uh, gone to the Braves or to see uh, Atlanta United play or something about the Hawks or other teams. So much is going on. And, and then did, did you see that the LCRU came out today? This, is, this has all the incredible stuff coming up in the life of our congregation this fall. I mean, this thing is huge. Look at all of this stuff. There are Bible studies and groups. There's a men's breakfast. There's a promise garden to work in. There's all the Wednesday night stuff that starts this Wednesday. It's all in here. Look at this. You've got studies and dinner starts and the Alleluia Choir and confirmation. Yeah, confirmation. It's all, I think we have like 18 or 19 kids in confirmation this year. Wow, it is incredible. So much is going on. And then if you flip to the back, there's these special events. We've got God's Work Our Hands uh, weekend coming up in September and something about a Jonathan Rudman concert. Have you heard of this guy? Have you seen him anywhere? I don't know. He, he's incredible. Great stuff. And hey, there you are. We are so glad that you are with us. Uh, so the concert, so take one of these. You got your reminder in there for four o'clock tonight. But there is so much good stuff and on and on and on. So many great opportunities. So many great opportunities. I love these great opportunities. But sometimes I kind of go, oh, man. Man, there's so much of them. In the midst of them, maybe you're like me and you kind of gasp for breath just a little bit. Maybe you feel like you're in the wilderness just a little bit. Maybe you feel hungry. Hmm. It sounds kind of like those people who followed Jesus around the lake through the wilderness and were hungry there after listening to his teaching and being healed by him. Now, what does Jesus say about those people that were following him? Does he say, you know, if you were better Christians, you'd just be at church three times a week? Is that what he says? No, no, no. Look back at the scripture. Instead, he, I think he says the same thing that he says about the loaves and the fish. He says, bring them here to me. Bring them here to me. Bring those five loaves and those two fish and let me show you God's mighty power. 5,000 men plus women and children? Wow, that's a huge group. Don't worry. God's got this. God's got this. So bring those loaves. Bring me those people. Bring all of the people and have them sit down and be fed by God. Don't send them away. That's what Jesus says. Don't send them away to fend for themselves. They don't need to go anywhere else. Bring them here to me. This is what I hear from our Lord. Bring them 
into Jesus' presence. Now in this, I hear an invitation and a challenge for us. As the school year starts and as you begin new routines, how can you respond to this word from our Lord? This fall, how can you bring them here to me? Now, kids, any kids out there? Anybody have parents? Anybody have parents? Yeah, a couple. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so parents, you can turn your ears off. But kids, I'm talking to you guys and kids of all ages, absolutely. So kids, here's something you can do to bring your parents to Jesus every Sunday. Is you can say, Mom, Dad, let's go to worship. And then you can get ready for worship and all those sort of things. Because you know when you say like, hey, let's go to the bouncy house or Six Flags or Chick-fil-A, what do your parents usually say? They might say no initially, but eventually, like if you say, Mom, I need new shoes because I've outgrown these, Mom's going to say, yeah, let's go get you new shoes, or let's go here, or, let's do this. You've got lots of power over your parents, so sh- don't tell them that, but you do. So use that and say, let's go to worship. Mom, take me to worship. Dad, take me to worship. And that's a great way that you can help bring your parents to Jesus. And then it always helps if you get ready on time and those sort of things. It helps to bring your parents to Jesus. All right, now parents, you can turn your ears back on. Um, Parents, one of the ways you can help your kids to bring them to Jesus is not only on Sundays bringing them to worship, but also you can connect worship every day and every night with your family's life and routine. You can connect it with bedtime. You can connect it with the dinner table. Lots of different places to connect what you do together here with what you do during the week. If you look around at the people in your pew or behind you or in front of you, you can pray for those people throughout the week with your kids. Add them to your bedtime routine. If you don't know the person's name next to you or behind you, say, hey, I forgot your name, sorry. We want to pray for you this week because, you know, the pastor said we had to. Um, So introduce yourself, write their name down, then pray for them this week. Um, You can also, when you come and go from worship, dip your fingers in the waters of the baptismal font. Dip your kids' fingers in there. Mark a cross. Say, remember, you're a child of God. Or sprinkle gently. Remember, you're a child of God. And then, when you're at home, you can do the same thing in the bathtub or just mark a cross and say, remember, you are a child of God. You can also take one of the bulletins and one of these lovely cranberry hymnals home with you. Or, when we're using the screens, we also have uh, large print bulletins that you can ask the ushers for as you leave. And it's got all the music in there. So you can take that with you as well because you can sing the same songs from worship and the liturgy and sing them during the week in the car or at bath time. You know, maybe not right before they go to bed, but right in that same time frame. And it connects what we do here with what we do there. And it helps to bring your kids and bring your family into Jesus' presence. Now, what do you think might happen if you brought them into Jesus' presence, if you brought them here to Jesus? Do you think Jesus might feed them? Do you think he might heal them? No. I dare you to try and see what happens. Do you think Jesus, do you think he might transform their lives in some powerful ways? Do you think he might embolden them to work for God's justice, to stand up for bullies, to speak the truth? Watch and see what God will do. Because those people in the wilderness, they were healed and they were fed in Jesus' presence. Do you imagine that he would dare to do the same today? Whom will you bring into Jesus' presence this fall? Now, while you're thinking about whom you'll invite to a small group or to worship, I want to flip the question around just a little bit. Not whom will you bring, but who will bring you into Jesus' presence? Who will bring you to Jesus this fall to be healed, to be fed, to be enlivened? Because wouldn't it be something if you opened the door to someone else in your life, to your kids, to your spouse, to uh, your neighbor next door maybe, and asked them to answer Jesus' call? What would it be like if you called up and said, Hey, neighbor, I heard Jesus calling today for you to bring me into his presence this fall. Will you help me? Will you help me connect to Jesus this fall? Would you make sure 
that I get to worship on Sundays? Would you read the Bible with me to listen for Jesus' voice? Will you help me find a group to serve with, to pray with, to share meals with? Will you help me? Because the truth is, you can't do this Jesus thing on your own. It's always been about two or three gathering in his presence. It's always been about the body of Christ. It's been about the groups of 50 and the groups of 5,000 plus. It's been about lunches that are shared, given to Christ, and transformed through him for the world. I want you to be quiet for just a moment and to listen. Listen closely for a name that Jesus will give you. Ask Jesus, Jesus, who do you have in mind to bring me to you this fall? And as you listen, and as you pray that, hold on to that first name that came into your mind. Write it down if you need to. Because after worship today, I want you to text that person. I want you to text them and ask them to help you this fall. Say, hey, your name popped into my head while my pastor was preaching. I know it's kind of weird, but it did. And I think Jesus' words, bring them here to me, are a call for you to help me to get me closer to Jesus this fall. Will you help me? Will you help me? I want you to give it a try. Give it a try. Ask that person to help bring you to Jesus this fall. And who knows what Jesus might do? Who knows what he'll do when they bring you to him? Will he transform you like the loaves and the fishes? Will he feed you? Will he heal you? Let's find out.